Good morning and thanks for coming. Uh, how about a round of applause for the Joliet Country Club for that great breakfast? Uh, thanks for coming this morning. Um, I need to begin with uh, thanking our four sponsors. Um, Centerpoint Properties, ExxonMobil, Silver Cross Hospital, and Darcy Automobiles. Without their support, this uh, whole initiative we do with Everyday Heroes would not be possible. So thank you very much. How about a round of applause? <laughs> the Herald News and Morris Herald News fourth annual Everyday Heroes initiative is one of my personal and our newspaper's favorite initiatives we do each year. Two quick thoughts I'd like to share, and then I'll introduce our keynote speaker. You know, we're in the media business, and we cover the news, which, as I think we all know, is not the most pleasant thing we do every day. So we cover things like taxes, crime, government, all that stuff that's not a whole lot of fun. But today's all about good news, good things everyday people do for the better of our communities. Most importantly, it's good news about other people that have an others first attitude and carry that forward to help our communities. And speaking of someone with an others first attitude, let me introduce this morning's keynote speaker. Kristen Coppers earned a bachelor's of arts degree at Western Michigan University, then went back for a master's in English and master's in administration. She's a nationally board certified educator and currently teaches English at Joliet West High School, as well as an adjunct professor at Joliet Junior College. She is the junior class committee sponsor where she advocates community service in her club and is a member of Shorewood Hugs, a team captain, captain for the member and member for the Joliet Relay for Life, a life member of the Women's Auxiliary for the VFW, and has spent 30 years volunteering in all capacities. Kristen is married to Christopher, and they have one son, Jacob. Kristen was also honored as one of the 16 everyday heroes in our first year in 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, Kristen Coppers. Good morning. So this is kind of like a deja vu for me. It's the same weather four years ago and I got lost again four years ago. So as I'm driving, I'm like, I think this is the place. And I'm looking around, I said, this is not the place. So we finally got here, at least I got here on time this year, unlike four years ago. <clears throat> um, so when I was trying to prepare for my speech, you always have to look back at things. And so I was watching the last, uh, last year's speech with J.D. Ross, and I'm like, how am I gonna follow that? He's got so many experiences, and he said so many good things but I'm going to try my best. Um, when I was asked to be the keynote speaker at this morning's Everyday Hero Breakfast, I was honored by the consideration. I did not think that I would be standing in front of you today offering inspiring words. You would think that standing up for 16 years teaching and speaking in front of others, I would be used to it. First, I would like to thank Shaw Media for once again showcasing the incredible selfless acts within our community. I would like to thank the sponsors, Centerpoint Properties, ExxonMobil, Silver Cross Hospital, and Darcy Motors for their help in continuing to recognize these individuals today. And most importantly, I would like to thank all the nominees for their outstanding support within our community. Shaw Media began this program four years ago to honor those who are well-deserved within our community. Once again, they spend countless hours choosing the 16 individuals to recognize today. The men, the women, the students that sit among us were viewed by family, friends, and coworkers as everyday people who saw the need and took it upon themselves to fulfill that need. Four years ago, I got an email stating I was one of the 16 individuals chosen to be honored at the first Everyday Hero Breakfast. Little did I know that with that email, I would meet someone who became one of my good friends. Allison Selk, which many of you have spoken with because she wrote all of your stories as well as mine. And the funny part was, when I did talk to her that day, 
I was telling her about the um, Minoka Bible Church every day, or um, great uh, church giveaway, which she runs. So I'm telling her about her own organization. <laughs> And she's just smiling at me, thinking I said something wrong, realizing she exactly knew what I was talking about. <clears throat> um, it's funny how one phone call or email can change a person's life. And as I sat down with her and explained that what I've done for the past 30 years wasn't anything special, I didn't realize that to some, it really was. While the word hero gets used in many contexts, none of us really see ourselves as heroes. After reading all of your biographies, I know why you were chosen as this year's everyday hero. You don't wear capes, you don't have a secret phone to answer, nor do you take credit for your kindness. Instead, when you were called upon, you answered the call. From beautifying our town while keeping its historic preservation to working with others and volunteering at local organizations while encouraging the youth to succeed, there's no doubt that you deserve this honor. I am proud to speak to all of you today, and if it wasn't for my mom and dad who taught me to care for others more than myself, I don't think I would be standing in front of you today. At 12, I began volunteering. I did it to earn some experience. Since then, I volunteered from one place to the next, helping others. From babysitting at 14, to volunteering at a veteran's home at the age of 18, to participating in a relay uh, team and becoming a team captain, to building a doghouse with students, to granting wishes to those who are in need. When I look back at all I've done, I would never trade those experiences. For the last 15 years, I've been part of the Joliet area community, from teaching at Joliet West, to helping local nonprofits such as Shorewood Hugs, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Will and Grundy County, Joliet Relay for Life, Habitat Humanity, and even though I know it's not within the Joliet area, Minooka Bible Church to educating the younger generation on what it means to volunteer. I see young students stand in the bitter cold to place wreaths on a veteran's grave at Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery, make tie blankets in remembrance of a little boy who passed away, make cards for hospitalized kids who are unable to be home, sponsor families around the holidays, collecting everyday items for children in Haiti, collect school supplies to send to a Texas school after Hurricane Harvey hit so they can be begin their school year, or walk 12 hours around a track hoping to find a cure for cancer. And what surprises me the most with these students is they do it without question. Usually the question I do get is, when's our next day, uh, volunteer opportunity? Sometimes it takes an event or experience to change our way of thinking. Just like all of you, someone has inspired us to be selfless. They inspired us to come out of our comfort zone and inspired us to be better than we were yesterday. On Sunday, when the newspaper is on the shelves, everyone will know your story. While some may hear devastating news that may shatter one's world, others will use it to help. This is, when, this is what I did when I found out that my mom was battling breast cancer. That was the beginning of me participating in the Relay for Life. This was the beginning of my cause. Over a decade later, my dad would not be able to finish his battle. In the six years since his passing, and the six years of having, sorry, I thought I could get through this, of having only a handful of students helping, we were able to raise over $32,000 for the Relay for Life. Yet, I continue to believe and help others like all of you today. <clears throat> so, as Dr. Seuss once said, which I just recently found out, he was not a doctor. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm sorry if I ruined it for most of you. <clears throat> <laughs> to the world, you may be one person, but to one, but to one person, you may be the world. These individuals are all but one person. But to the people they help every day, they truly are the world. I congratulate all the honorees today, because today you are a hero. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. A couple quick thoughts here and um, regarding the nominations for this year. 
Um, we received a record number of nominations this year. We had 90 nominations. Um, we really tried to um, push the envelope as far as um, getting the message out for the, nominate, for the number we received. Um, in the past years, we've gotten like 50, 60, and we got 90 this year, which was our record. I do want to uh, uh, send a shout out to J.D. Ross, who's uh, been instrumental over the last four years with this program. Uh, he really helped us, and he was on our selection committee. So thanks, J.D., for all you've done uh, to make this program what it is. Um, um, prior to call, uh, let me do this. Um, so just here's how the program, here's how it's going to work. We're going to start. We're going to announce the winners alphabetically. I'll uh, announce the name and then read about a, uh, a short snippet um, on the, why the recipient is receiving the award. And then if the winner would come, I'll call the winner forward and then you'll receive a plaque. Um, in addition this year, and I just want to mention this real quick, um, you'll, re you'll notice that the winners are going to receive an envelope. Inside the envelope is a gift card from Heroes West, which is a restaurant in the community in Joliet here. Um, the owner there, Joe Pecora, has graciously donated a $50 gift card to each of our 16 um, winners this year. So that's a, that's a special surprise for this year. So if I could have Pete Colarelli from ExxonMobil, Brian Sheehan from Centerpoint Properties, and Deborah Robbins from Silver Cross Hospital come forward so we could begin with the presentations. Our first Everyday Heroes recipient for 2018 is Quinn Adamowski. <laughs> Quinn is a lifelong Joliet resident. His day job is spent working with at-risk youth from grades 6 through 12. He's a member of the Community Services Council of Will County, a District 86 Board of Inspectors, and Joliet Historical Preservation Commission member. He's president of the Cathedral Area Preservation Commission and a project acclaim and is a member of the Project Acclaim Commission also to promote Joliet and Will County. I asked we asked Quinn to share a thought. Quote, we have so many good things here in Joliet. We celebrate diversity and individual individuality that make Joliet a great place to live. Quinn, please come forward. Our next Everyday Heroes recipient is Dr. Theodore Bellos. Dr. Bellos has given his Sundays to volunteering at Joliet Area Community Hospice since 1981. Over his 37 years of service, a significant part of his time has been dedicated to those who do not have a relative near or no relatives at all in the last hours of their lives. He takes his role very seriously, juggling his own patients and his home life to make sure he spends his four hours each week at hospice. Hospice volunteer manager Denise Payton summed up Dr. Bellos's volunteer work. Quote, no matter what the complications are in his life, he is here for his shift. He is caring, compassionate, and has empathy. He is just always doing for everybody. Dr. Bellos, please come forward. Our next 2018 Everyday Heroes recipient is Elena Cabral. After a brain aneurysm in 2013, Elena re-evaluated the meaning of her life and used her talents for community service. She also gained a new perspective saying, quote, my life is really different, it's a lot better. Elena has made the life of others better as well as she joined the Three Rivers Habitat for Humanity where she solicits donations for discounts from suppliers for materials. In addition, 
She also works with the University of Illinois Extension, where she is a bilingual coordinator for the 4-H program. Elena shared this with us. Quote, Grundy County does more for me than I do for them. I could have died in September 2013, and now I have a second chance to make a difference in other people's lives. Elena, please come forward. Our next Everyday Heroes recipient for 2018 is Richard Chavez. Richard believes in education and in providing scholarship assistance to students looking to pursue a college education. He believes in this so much that he donated $100,000 to, to the Kiwanis Scholarship Fund in 2018. Not surprisingly, he now has a scholarship fund in his name. Richard also gives yearly to the Illinois Promise Fund and La Casa Fund a total of $37,000 of merit-based funds which are distributed to the University of St. Francis and University of Illinois students. In addition, Richard volunteers at St. Joseph's Medical Center transporting patients and at the Will Grundy Medical Clinic. Kiwanis Club member Carla Guzman said this about Richard, quote, I'm amazed by his generosity. He is a servant to the community. Richard, please come forward. Our next 2018 Everyday Heroes Assistant Award winner is Terry Crotty. Terry has always had a passion for animals. As a child, she rescued them before the word rescue was a thing. She spent her life being involved with and caring for animals, even when the most needy that the most wouldn't get involved with. Then in 2013, she had the desire to do more, so she opened up Wags to Wishes, a Plainfield-based operation that is funded by donations. Karate and her team take in about 500 animals each year. They are known to take on the worst of the worst cases in order to give animals a second chance at life, oftentimes at great expense. In her spare time, Terry has helped with St. Joe's Academy and Bras for a Cause, a cancer benefit. Terry sums up her efforts with this, quote, I want this world and community to be a better place for the youth growing up. The more I give, the more I hope to inspire someone else. Terry, please come forward. <laughs> Our next 2018 Everyday Heroes recipient is Joette Doyle. Joette can be found with the Plainfield Junior Women's Club at senior centers, leading committee, committee, committees for women's issues, our caring closet in Wilmington, or her newest love, a micro pantry for, full of food for the underserved. The micro pantry has grown from a location for food into a community outreach vehicle. A recent example is an apartment was furnished on the weekend on August 4th. In addition, Joette leads Operation Flashlight, a group that spreads love and cheer to residents in senior facilities and nursing homes. Joette says, quote, I just keep it all in perspective. I want to shed a little bit of happiness. Joette, please come forward.
Our next 2018 Everyday Heroes recipient is Elmer Geisler. Elmer joined the Joliet Kiwanis Club in 1960 and is the group's longest serving member. He followed in his late father's footsteps as a Kiwanian and in many other aspects of his life. In addition to his extensive work with Kiwanis, Elmer served on the District 86 Board of Education with multiple roles and in multiple roles with the Central Presbyterian Church and has over 3,600 service hours at Silver Cross Hospital. <laughs> Support from one of our sponsors. <laughs> Always proud of his roots, he left for only four years and went to Hanover College where he received an Alumni Achievement Award for volunteering in his community. He's only missed three homecomings at Hanover in nearly 70 years, remaining, remaining loyal to his alma mater just as he's remained loyal to the Joliet area. Elmer would like to see other seniors involved not only in other non-for-profit services. Quote, my body's wearing out before my mind, but there are so many other opportunities out there, even for people my age. Elmer, please come forward. Our next 2018 Everyday Heroes recipient is Alicia Guerrero. Alicia has taken the pain and loss of her 15-year-old daughter and transformed it into, an advo into advocacy for women who suffer from domestic violence. As a three-year volunteer at Guardian Angel Community Services, she has told her family's story in hopes that it would save the lives of others. Quote, I listened to a speaker who lost her pregnant daughter being there helped me physically and emotionally, and it gave me energy to do more. This year, she worked with the Investigation Discovery Network, and in October will be the guest speaker at the annual Take Back the Night event in October. Inez Kulisha, CEO of Guardian Angel Home Services, notes that it takes an insurmountable and tremendous amount of strength, courage, and resilience to share her story. Elisha, serves as an inspiration to countless others who have lost their loved ones to domestic violence. Alicia, please come forward. Our next recipient is Henry James. Henry has taken the role of local handyman, errand runner, smoke alarm tester, event planner, and food drive coordinator for the Carillon Lakes community. In 2017, he headed up the efforts and collected 97 boxes of food for local food pantries. The over 55 community has an aging population. Many have said they would move to an assisted living facility if Henry were not there to help. Henry also works outside of Carillon Lakes and has volunteered in the Surgical Center at St. Joseph's Medical Center and is an usher and greeter at Our Savior Lutheran Church. He and his wife Barbara also serve at the Daybreak Shelter in Joliet. Henry summed up his dedication to service in this way, quote, after I retired, I decided on some things I could do, especially now the way the world is, we need to get together and help each other. Henry, please come forward. Our next Everyday Heroes recipient for 2018 is Pat Caveney. Pat is involved in a laundry list of non-for-profit agencies that serve the greater Will County area. A longtime member of the Joliet Lions Club, she's actively involved in the group's eye screening initiative. 
Pat volunteers at St. Vincent de Paul as a board member and volunteer at the Morning Star Mission as well. Every Saturday night is date night with her husband. It always involves pickup at Panera Bread and delivery to daybreak shelter so the guests have bread on Sunday morning. Pat also places wreaths on military graves at the Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery. In reference to her extraordinary busy schedule, Pat says, quote, I feel like I need to support the community that supported me. People need to see you can volunteer. You don't have to support it in big ways. If you have an hour or two, get involved with a nonprofit. Pat, please come forward. Pat used to work for me, so sorry. <laughs> she survived that, she can survive anything. Our next recipient for 2018 Everyday Heroes is Eric Kimball. Eric is not an ordinary coach. He's the coach that kids request to play for, even though he doesn't always tell them exactly what they want to hear. As a volunteer coach at the C.W. Avery YMCA, he has interacted with kids of all ages, from grade school all the way up through high school. In 2014, he founded a not-for-profit to provide comfort and help for the elderly and mentoring programs for youth. He's also incredibly generous. Eric began running sports camps for children to attend free of charge, and one time paid for his entire team to play in the YMCA Summer League. He's also been known to give a kid a ride to school, pick up the, kids, the cost of a kid's shoes, or do just whatever it takes. Eric shared his philosophy. Quote, I want to capture their imagination, give them direction and focus on something positive so they can do something extraordinary and conquer their dreams. Eric, please come forward. Our next 2018 Everyday Heroes recipient is Clifford Lauderdale. After spending two tours in Vietnam and surviving without a scratch, Clifford felt, it was, felt his life was spared in order to spend the rest of it in service of veterans in need. He has since made it his mission to be the person who connects veterans in either, with either ways to volunteer or receive needed assistance. Clifford is a member of the Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery Memorial Squad and volunteers at Joliet Hospice, where the veterans are presented with pins during an honor ceremony. In addition, he formed a veterans group and color guard in the Shorewood Glen community and also volunteered at St. Joseph Medical Center as a transporter and greeter. Looking back and forward, Clifford reflected in this way. Why was I spared? I was spared to tell my story help other veterans. I want to give honor back to veterans. Clifford, please come forward. It's all about making people smile. <laughs> Our next 2018 Everyday Heroes recipient is Jerry Morse. With a master's degree in education, Jerry had her mind set on a teaching career at the high school or college level, but then God had other plans for her. From that point forward, she has worked in the religious education department at St. Mary Immaculate in Plainfield. Over the last 11 years, 
She has served as the program's director where she coordinates all the curriculum and volunteer instructors. With hundreds of children in multiple grade levels, it's a daunting task. Jerry has been described as a, quote, ray of sunshine and has had numerous volunteers continue on after their own children completed the program. She's also been known to assist families in need within her program. In the words of volunteer teacher Debrie Jeffrey, quote, I still volunteer because I like to work with Jerry. She's a role model. Jerry, please come forward. Our next 2018 Everyday Heroes recipient is Caitlin Robertson. At age 17, Caitlin has taken on the role of community service leader. A student at Plainfield North High School, she acts as a physical education leader within the spe with special education students. This involves attending classes in order to assist teachers, plus creating activities for those with physical and social limitations. Caitlin also belongs to a group called Tiger Buddies that takes field trips with the goal to increase interaction with special education students. In addition, she's been an active member of the Plainfield Juniorettes, where she's now president. The group works on special pro on projects for Feed My Starving Children and other similar projects. Additionally, she spent this past summer as part of the Student Ambassador Program at St. Joseph Medical Center. Regarding her wor work with special edu education kids at school, Caitlin says, quote, I like seeing the kids every day, seeing their smile, it makes me smile. I form friendships and it makes that my favorite part of the day. Caitlin, please come forward. Our next 2018 Everyday Heroes recipient is Sue Staley. When Sue lost her 18-year-old son Mark to cancer in 2006, she decided to turn that difficult experience into a positive. She also fulfilled the wish of her late son and started the Make Your Mark Foundation. The driving force for the foundation came from Mark, who as a cancer patient began many projects to help his friends he met along his cancer journey including a toy drive where over 70,000 toys were collected in 2006. Through various private donations and fundraising events, the Make Your Mark Foundation has raised over $1.4 million since its inception. The goal of the foundation is to assist families with expenses during cancer treatments. Looking back on how the foundation started, Sue said, quote, before he died, Mark said he wanted me to continue the toy drive as long as I could and raise money for cancer research. You had to know Mark, I had to keep my promises. Sue, please come forward. And our final 2018 Everyday Heroes recipient for, is Janet Weekly. Outside of her day job, where she donates time to the Shop with a Sheriff program, Janet is involved with a myriad of non-for-profit opportunities, most of which come from her heading up the Outreach Committee at the Shanahan United Methodist Church. This group donates to various local groups like Morning Star Mission, Daybreak Shelter, plus a local nursing and veterans homes. She bakes, cooks, serves food, and organizes the groups of volunteers. The Outreach Committee also created fundraisers for mission trips and local mission opportunities for members. In addition, Janet has spent the last 10 years volunteering her time with hospice patients. When asked about her service to others, Janet said, quote, I just like helping people if I can. If I can bring a smile to someone and make their life easier, 
That is more than re rewarding. Janet, please come forward. So now we've got a video we put together where we asked all the recipients to share their thoughts um, on receiving their awards. So we're going to get that fired up and... Uh I'm just a guy who's doing what he can to make a community better. And really, this honor that you guys are bestowing upon me is very humbling, but the truth is it's more of a reflection of those that I work with on a daily basis than it is on me. It's really important for me to be able to work in the county because everyone comes together and when we do that, we make a difference in someone's life. It's very important for me to be able to carry on my late son Mark's work. Um, he was an amazing child and he did so much for everybody else that I, I wanted to carry on his legacy of love, compassion, and service to others. And my feeling is you can't always take, you gotta give a little bit. And it's my, been my pleasure to give. I've, I've really enjoyed it. And if anything that I've done for an individual or an organization that helped them, then it's a plus for both of us because it really helped me. I believe that everybody, if they have the time and the talent, should give, give back to the community as much as they can. And for me, it's exhilarating, and it's something that I hope to keep doing for years upon years. Um, I was very emotional about it. It's inspiring, motivating to keep me going. Um, it means a lot. Well, it's really important because I like to see the expression on uh, the veterans' face when they uh, receive what they want you know, when they get out of what I do, so. It's always had it in my heart to help kids and help people. You know, God laid it on my heart to start a nonprofit organization. It's called the Feed Group. It's an acronym for Focus, Extraordinary, Excellent Goal. I feel that if I'm able to change one person's life doing what I do, that means the world to me. Because I saw there was a need and um, I could do it and uh, it doesn't take that much time, it doesn't take that much out of my life, so um, it just adds to my life. The unique thing about what I do is I get to do it every day. And uh, I work with kids, and it's, it's just reinforcement. It's reinforcement. Uh, this whole thing has been a wonderful way for me to kind of think about what I do, and that it, it is making a difference, and I think that's great. Whatever I can do for somebody or something, and it's my pleasure. It's been a reward for me. To, I love doing it, that's all. I always just felt like God gives people gifts, and once you learn what your gift is, that's what you kind of proceed to do with your life. And I always just felt mine was giving. Um, at an early age, I always would just want to do for other people. It's important to me because I think there's always people in our community that need help every day and if you have extra time then why not be the person to help them and it makes you feel good about yourself and it helps others in the process. It's important to me to give to others because everybody has struggles and a little bit of kindness can change someone's life. I want to be that change. It's important because we need to help the animals do what we can for the animals that have no voice. We need to be their voice. I feel it's very important to help people. The uh, people I help constantly thank me. Uh, the ladies who nominated me for this award is the ultimate thank you. It's very humbling uh, to get this award. I'm very honored. I don't necessarily see myself as a hero. Um, my son Mark was the true hero, and I'm just doing what he would have wanted me to do. Well, it means a lot to me because I think uh, 
I'm accomplishing a mission that uh, I think I'm here to do. It is extremely important that I assist students when there is financial need, as was done for me when I received the Kiwana Scholarship. I work with people um, every day who do what I do, and why I was the one that was selected was really kind of a surprise. But uh, we have a lot of everyday heroes out there every single day. I don't consider myself an everyday hero. Um, I just do what I do because I like it. This is an unexpected honor. An everyday hero helps others, but does not expect anything in return. An everyday hero to me is to make a difference in the community and just to be nice to somebody and kind, even if it's open up a door or just to say good morning with a smile. First, I don't feel like I'm a hero, but I am honored that people think that I am a hero. An everyday hero to me is someone who selflessly gives to others without seeking something in return, and they see a need and they act on it without hesitation. But also the real heroes are the men and women that are in the police uniform and firemen, and also who serve the military. And to me, those are my heroes. When I first got the news, I was stunned. And then when you hear about the process, about you know someone offering up your name and then getting others to write letters in support of you, it's very humbling. I think being an everyday hero doesn't necessarily mean being a hero to you, but helping other people and putting a smile on their face and making their lives better just while doing what you would normally do from your day-to-day -day life. I saw how a simple act of changing batteries in a smoke alarm or adding salt to a, a water softener meant a big help to her. I just hope to continue to help my friends and neighbors. To be an everyday hero to me is simply just reaching out and helping others. And my mother always taught me, be kind of people. I think everyday heroes are everybody who's in the county who takes the time to do something for somebody else. And I just consider myself one person out of an amazing team who works together. And Grundy County and Will County even, it's just great the people that give so much. Appreciate everybody, uh, all the award winners sharing their thoughts there. So, really inspiring. Um, would like to take a minute just as we wrap up here this morning. Um, any of the nominators that are here today, if you could just stand for a moment, please. Anybody who nominated one of our winners? So the, the way the process works is this doesn't happen if we don't have nominators. So you're the straw that stirs the drink. So great job and thank you very much for taking the time to do that. So that was very, very important. A uh, couple thank yous and then um, you got one surprise where you get the gift card and then we have another surprise which Sarah is unraveling as we speak. Um, thank, um, so Dick and Millie Schuster from Joliet Cable Channel 6 have been filming uh, this for us. So if you know somebody in Joliet that has cable, which would be most people, um, this will be airing, Dick, sometime in the next week or so. Um, so you have a little uh, video of this, so you have access to that. And then Sunday, if you subscribe to the Herald News, if you, or the Morris Herald News, if you don't, you should, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> we, have, we have a preview copy of the actual section that we'll be publishing. We will be handing out to everybody on their way out. Um, so that's one thing we have for everybody. I uh, get a sneak peek. Uh, the section will also be online if you're not a print subscriber. We'll also have some extra copies back at the office um, if you don't subscribe or you don't get it out of one of our single copy outlets. But obviously, um, we're really proud of this initiative, and we think um, uh, it's, the, like I said, it's the, our favorite one that we do every year. So uh, with that, I want to make sure, okay, again, one more thank you to our sponsors, ExxonMobil, CenterPoint, Silver Cross, and Darcy for everything they did to make this possible. And if you could please exit that through those doors because there's a golf outing going on 
that's coming in through that. So the country club's got a lot of business going on. We're not hurrying you out of here. The golf outing's not coming in these doors um, or in this room. But if you're going out those doors, they'll hand the sections to you as you go out those doors. Thank you very much for making this possible, and have a great day. <laughs>